clouds. Hello everybody and welcome. It's an auspicious day for Space Game fans because there are news around Kerbal Space Program 2 that we need to talk about. Yesterday the YouTube channel for Kerbal Space Program 2 released two videos both related to the upcoming sequel. One is a short studio update uh, video and the other one is a more detailed look at some of the next generation spaceship technologies that are going to be brought to life with KSP2. I am going to dissect both of them, so strap in, there's a lot to unpack here. I'm going to start with the studio update video. At the same time the video came out, Take Two published a press release stating the development of Kerbal Space Program 2 was moved to an in-house studio of private division, the publisher also in charge of the first KSP. If you remember, back when KSP2 was announced, the studio in charge was called Star Theory, but it looks like that's gone. Their Facebook page does not have a new post since October, their Twitter is dead since August, and their website is basically reduced to a placeholder. That in and of itself would be an alarming signal, but it appears that a large portion of the KSP2 development team, maybe even all of them, were moved to the new studio. The press release explicitly names creative director Nate Simpson, with whom I did an interview during PAX West, along with lead producer Nate Robinson and Star Theory studio head Jeremy Abels. In the next-gen tech video, we can also see senior game designer Tom Vinita, who was also part of the original KSP2 team. So what's really going on here? I have reached out to my contacts within Private Division but have not received an official answer if this was a complete merger or if only parts of the case poo uh, poo? <laughs> KS poo. <laughs> uh, we don't want KS poo, right? Again! Or if only parts of the KSP2 dev team were onboarded. What is to note here are remarks from Nate Simpson during the studio update video uh, that they now have direct access to the resources of private division and therefore can pursue a more ambitious vision for the game. This sounds to me a lot like uh, the team was increased in size and that they want to add more to the game than they initially planned. Here is my personal take on this based on my experience within the software industry. Adding new team members, increasing your staff, does not increase output at first. On the contrary, you have to onboard these people first, which consumes the time of the people already there. So until the new guys are onboarded, the overall output will be reduced, because the new guys can't add value yet and the old ones uh, need to spend their time bringing the new ones up to speed. This in conjunction with the fact that they want to add more to the game explains the delay of Kerbal Space Program 2 that was already announced back in November. The press release now names the entire fiscal year 2021 starting from April 1st 2020 to March 31st 2021 as the release window. The slipped release schedule is also underlined by the announcement that there will be feature videos in the coming months we should keep an eye out for. Months in plural. I have an opinion on that, but I'll do that at the end of this video after we have talked about some of the new revelations in the first feature video. This video titled Next Gen Tech takes a closer look at near future technologies for rocket propulsion. After talking about Project Orion, they focus on metallic hydrogen and how an engine utilizing it would work in conjunction with magnetic nozzles. Fascinating stuff from a scientific and engineering standpoint and I also talked about that with Scott Manley back at PAX West. The engine's visual effects look stunning even in the pre-alpha stage the game is still in. And the engine plume is pink, not by choice, but based on scientific facts. Watch the video, it's really fun to watch and enlightening how they got to that uh, conclusion. We also learned that colonies will be a big part of producing metallic hydrogen. It looks like they really want to make sure you have an interesting path of progression through the game and utilize as much of the features as possible. We also learn about other engines, including a 
torch drive that they want to put into the game. There are not really any details about that, except uh, creative director Nate Simpson calling it screaming white death. There's not really, or I at least, did not find any real definition out there of what a torture drive is supposed to be. The term was first coined, if memory serves correctly, by uh, science fiction novels and mostly describes some sort of fusion reaction engine. But let's focus on the game Kerbal Space Program 2 and not so much on the science behind it, because while that is also very interesting, it's more in Scott Manley's area ex of expertise than mine. I want to point your attention to two things in the feature video. First, we have clouds! Finally, stock clouds inside a KSP game. I am delighted, but to be honest, I expected nothing less after this comment from Nate Simpson during our interview. Um, we're working on the atmosphere system right now. We've got very high hopes. If you listen closely, he calls it the atmospheric system, which to me is not just reduced to displaying clouds. Maybe there will be weather phenomena, thunderstorms on lathe? Who knows? There's also a short glimpse of the user interface of Kerbal Space Program 2 when they talk about the explosions and how they will be different in atmosphere and in space, and there will be, they will be differently colored depending on what fuel type you carry. I'm already coming up with fireworks ideas, but let's get to back to the UI. I made a video about that back in uh, autumn after I got to see it live during PAX West. In my video I tried to mock it in Photoshop so you could get a better idea of what's going on. <laughs> Apparently some viewers mistook my bad Photoshop skills for the real deal, uh, but we can still see a lot of the elements I talked about back then in the current video as well. The nav ball is on the left hand side and in a flat styling and there is also the throttle indicator to the left with the kerbals on the top left. There is also the orientation indicator I talked about in my video and the other UI elements in the center of the screen. Maybe we will find out more around PAX East, which is in about a week. I have heard from a source I cannot disclose that there might be some more KSP news around that time. So let's recap the news. There was an organizational change in the development team of Kerbal Space Program 2 with Private Division now completely in control of the game. It appears many of the original team are still on board, but we don't know how many and how that might affect the development process. We know that they want to make the game more ambitious, however we don't know yet what that really means. The game might slip into 2021 due to these developments. There will be feature videos in the upcoming months until the release highlighting parts of the new game. Metallic hydrogen burns pink! There will be torch drives, whatever that means. The UI will be very different from what we are used to in KSP1. We have clouds! Watch out for PAX East for more. So what's your take on the new revelations around KSP2? Did I miss something in the feature video? If something caught your eye, please leave a comment below or join me on my Discord link in the description, where we have already gathered a great community talking about crazy Kerbal builds, space and technology in general. Now that we have the news on the table, here's my take on it. I don't mind the integration of star theory into private division as long as creative control remains with the passionate people that began development of Kerbal Space Program 2 in the beginning. The feature video is a good indication that this passion is alive and well, and I have a good feeling about it translating into the game. Regarding the release date, I already mentioned back in November uh, that I'm willing to wait longer if it means that uh, this is what it takes to make Kerbal Space Program 2 the best game it can be. And it gives me enough time to finish up some projects in KSP1 that I have been slacking on. Um, just make sure it comes out in my lifetime, okay? I'm going to keep my eye out for news around KSP2 as usual, so subscribe to this channel if you're interested in that as well. I don't really know how to end this video intelligently, so here's just my standard outro. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.